Hi, my name is Boris and in today's video I'm going to show you the top 5 piano roll updates in Live 12. The piano roll has become an incredible tool for creating drum patterns, chords and melodies, especially with the addition of the generative tools. This update can really really improve your workflow. Before we get into the video, if you like what we are doing on this channel, make sure to subscribe. We've got a lot more videos on Live 12 coming up. And if you'd like to learn Live 12 with all the foundations of music production, check out our beginner to advanced Live 12 start to finish course. All right, so let's get started. Let's just open up a new MIDI track and create a MIDI clip. And let's take a look at some of the awesome features that we have here. Okay, I just also took a very simple mallet sound so that we have some sound source. And let's take a look at it. Okay, so update number one is quantization. Now quantization is moved to a separate part here. So we need to switch from pitch and time utilities into transformation tools. There's also the generative tools tab, but we'll get to that later. And the transformation tools, you need to select quantize. And here you have a nice menu for quantization. Let's uh, record maybe a very simple MIDI clip. We have a sort of non-rhythmic pattern which doesn't fit the grid at all. Yeah, now we can quantize it um, in various different settings. First of all, it used to be only available through this option, so you would go to, into quantize settings uh, here, a window would pop up and you would tweak the settings there, but you could only do quantize. But here in Live 12, we've got this amount now which is really, really great. So you can observe in real time how the notes are moving. If we take a look at it closer, it's a really big difference, but now it's uh, actually quantizing to the grid. If we uh, turn off the adaptive grid, for example, just stick with 16th notes and select all the notes, uh, you're gonna see, boom, the notes are really sliding. And uh, this is a great option mm, if you'd like to uh, have a lot of control over how much quantization you need. Uh, you can also turn it off. Now this doesn't do anything and you can just apply uh, how much percent you want, for example, 50%. Yeah, you can also choose uh, your different quantization metrics here uh, and you can also quantize to the grid, which is default. And of course, start and end, these settings did not change. So quantization is really cool now. But what's especially cool is that if we quantize, for example, 100%, now it's all on the grid 16th, uh, on the 16th grid, maybe we can also do this. Oh, so it's start and end all in the 16th note slots. Okay, but a really, really cool thing, which is almost like a reverse quantization, is uh, here in the pitch and time utilities, what you have here is humanization. So you can choose how much you want these notes to be humanized and small deviations will be added to the MIDI notes. As you can see, they are shifting just slightly. For example, this note really slides to the left here. And yeah, also responds really nicely dynamically to it. And for example, what you could do is just, uh, you can record your phrase, then quantize it and then add humanization. So now you have a lot of control over the timing. And also, of course, something that's possible here is velocity randomization. Also a nice slider here, which can adjust how much the randomization you need. These options can already, with a few clicks, turn your unquantized offbeat weird pattern into something that's quantized, humanized, and a little bit the velocity is randomized. So awesome quantization features, really useful technique here. Okay, so technique number two is arpeggiation. And you can now not only arpeggiate with the MIDI effect, but also straight from the piano roll. This is a really cool thing. And now, and now Live 12 really resembles all the crazy MIDI editing features of FL Studio. So for example, let's add a chord, fold to our scale. We can create a C7 chord. Uh, let's click legato so that it plays over the entire clip and now let's arpeggiate it. So let's go into the second tab, click arpeggiate and boom, transform. This also responds now in real time. We can pick 16th notes, let's pick 8 notes. 
And now we can see visually how these different arpeggiation parameters correspond to what's going on MIDI-wise. For instance, we can go boom 12 steps. And now we are actually working with the scale mode enabled, so we are using uh, scale degrees here. But if we disable this, we are going to be using semitones. So for example, 12 semitones would, would give us here uh, the repeated and and one step would give us a repeated um, seventh chord here above it. Yeah, but it's also going to be a bit different when we choose the scale mode, because now we actually need to go over all the way to seven. We can even uh, go higher. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of options here. The arpeggiator is really really great. You could also work a bit like that when you recorded the MIDI coming out of the arpeggiator MIDI effect, but now it's incredibly visual and incredibly responsive as well and uh, quite a simple but powerful feature. Next up we have chopping and joining notes and there's a lot of shortcuts that uh, are new to Ableton Live 12 which make MIDI editing much much easier. For example, let's just add a simple note and click legato so that it fills the entire clip. We can choose our grid. I'm just clicking Ctrl and 2 to get a wider grid. And for example, if you'd like to chop this note according to the grid, all you need is selecting it and pressing Ctrl and E on Windows or Command and E on Mac. And this is also really useful for hi-hats. For example, if I take like a trap style hi-hat and you want to have 16th notes, usually you would have to draw it in like this. Now all you need is Command or Control and E, boom. And you can have a grid that is wider or you can have a grid that is narrower. It's very, very simple. For example, we can now add a stutter. Let's make the grid narrower and maybe add a triplet and boom, Command E or Control E. And it's incredibly easy, really fun to work like that. Now something else we could do is chopping with drag, because slicing the MIDI is now also possible by dragging the mouse through the MIDI note. All you need is holding E and just dragging through it. Boom. Just make sure that the computer MIDI keyboard is disabled here and you can chop it like this. And yeah, this is a nice visual way of chopping notes, not necessarily on the grid. Another way of creating MIDI note slices is dragging the note up so on Windows, you need to pr first press E, then Control, and you can drag the note up. And as you can see, it creates as many slices as you want. And it's really crazy, really fun to work like that. And on Mac, the uh, combination of keys is really simple also. It's Alt plus E. Just bear in mind that the order of pressed keys, especially on Windows, is important here uh, because it won't work in reverse. If you uh, do Control plus E, instead it will slice your note uh, at the current playhead, boom, like this. In order to use that function, just E, Control, and drag it up. And uh, there's this icon that basically tells you that you can do this. There's also a nice shortcut for joining notes. So we have some notes like this, for example. And if we need to join them, if you need to join them, just Control on Windows or Command on the Mac and J. That's also really cool. Okay, feature number four is a really, really big one and it's the rhythm generator. So finally, now let's take a look at the generative tools. It's the third tab here and you have rhythm, seed, shape and stacks. Also Euclidean and Max MIDI generators, but let's stick with rhythm because in my opinion, this is uh, probably the easiest and probably most useful one out of all of these. It generates MIDI patterns based on the parameters you set over here. So what we have are steps, pattern selection and density. You can this way create MIDI patterns you wouldn't have otherwise come up with. Uh, Right, so uh, let's choose this. First of all, let's maybe choose the step duration. This function is uh, designed to work primarily with MIDI drums, but it definitely also can be used on synths. Uh, first of all, let's take the steps all the way down and choose the duration of 16th notes. We have a synth patch playing a seventh chord. Here's what the rhythm generator is going to give us by default. If we increase the steps, we can now choose the density from one to two. And the more steps we have, 
the more parameters are available. Let's go all the way up with the steps. Let's increase the density. And as you can see now, we have 20 patterns available. If we increase the density even more, we now have less patterns. And it all depends on the length of the clip. So if we make the clip much longer, consolidate it and remove all the notes, we can now have 3000 patterns, that's just crazy. Basically with some messing around with the steps, pattern selector and density, we can come up sometimes with some nice rhythmic patterns. So let's solo our drums. And we have some house drums loaded up here. And let's mess around and try to find some kind of pattern. It's almost usable, uh, but we can try to do something else. Let's just focus on this section and remove the rest. Maybe we can uh, decrease the density a bit. We have some sidechain compression here. Maybe we can now duplicate it a couple of times, consolidate it. This is not only useful for drums because now we can repitch some of these sounds. Uh, let's give it a listen. <laughs> Now we have a starting point for a house track and I haven't even written any MIDI notes really. It's really, really fun. Uh, messing around with the rhythm generator, um, you can do that all day pretty much and make tons of tracks. Now feature number five is also a generative tool and it's called Seed. Let's take a look at it. And we're going to use this to create some more melodic type patterns. We have a patch called Clouds and Bells. Maybe we can also create a MIDI pattern and we can take a look at the rhythm generator here. Let's just enable the scale here and click generate. Let's see what it comes up with. Okay, let's solo it. This is a common effect, it sounds quite random. So what I like to do is mess around with these features until you think there's a good chance of uh, getting something nice. Click generate a couple of times and just listen. If you find something that works, you can uh, copy and mess around with it and tweak it further. So let's click generate a few times. This one is pretty nice, let's listen. I can imagine this part being tweaked, so let's loop that. Uh, okay, I'll consolidate this, remove the rest, and let's uh, let's see what we can do with this. For example, this can be the start. Let's fold our scale so that we are only left with the C major notes. Maybe let's delete these notes uh, completely and listen to what it's like. That's kind of an A and B pattern. So sometimes it sticks, sometimes it doesn't. I'm honestly not going to continue with this pattern here. You can really mess around with however big of a range you want here and the duration of the notes and the velocities of the notes. So maybe create a melodic pattern first and then try to uh, do something with the rhythm generator that fits it better because uh, it's not as melodic. Right, I hope you'll find these features useful. To me, especially the chopping shortcuts as well as the generative tools are incredibly handy. If you can use all of this in track, this can really improve your workflow and speed up the music making process. Make sure to check out our Music Production Academy with start to finish courses on making tracks in various genres as well as the Ableton Live 12 beginner to advanced course which not only teaches you all about Life 12, but also gives you a great foundation and teaches you tons of production techniques. All links you will find in the video description. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell. If you enjoyed this video, leave us a like, write us a comment, and I will see you in the next ones. Bye.